morning and welcome everyone. My name is Marie Strauch. I am the educator with Your New School. We're going to be getting started in about five minutes or so. So in the meantime, if you can please utilize the chat box and type in your full name, full school name, and school location. Please do not abbreviate your school name. Um, it makes it easier for me to find your school when I'm sending out your attendance because a lot of schools have very similar abbreviations. So I want to make sure I'm getting your information to the correct school. Also, please make sure that your microphones are muted and your cameras are turned off. This is going to help to minimize feedback as well as help with the video portion not lagging or buffering. So again, please make sure that your cameras are turned off and your microphones are muted. And then Emily, are you on so I can make you co-host? So again, for those of you who are just jumping on, please make sure that you have typed in your full name, full school name, and school location into the chat box. Please do not abbreviate your school name. Um, this helps to make sure that I'm getting your information to the correct school. And then also please make sure that your microphones are muted and your cameras are turned off. This helps to minimize feedback. It also helps to have less buffering or lagging in the presentation. So I've manually turned off a few cameras already and I've muted everyone's microphones, but sometimes the Zoom app just unmutes microphones and turns your cameras back on. So um, I will do my best to keep an eye on it. But then once I start the presentation, well, I lose track of that. That's where you come in, Emily, because I lose track. <laughs> <laughs> I don't pay attention. I got double screens, so I'm only looking at one screen. <coughs> so we're going to get started in just a couple of minutes. For those of you who are just jumping on, please make sure that you typed in your full name, your school name, and your school location into the chat box. Please do not abbreviate your school name. Otherwise, a lot of schools have very similar abbreviations and I want to make sure that I'm getting the correct attendance to the correct school.
Hi, good morning and welcome everyone. My name is Marie Strauch. I am the educator with your new school. A little bit about myself. I am a licensed cosmetologist and cosmetology instructor. I've been in the industry for over 23 years and of those 23, I did spend 15 of them teaching cosmetology, hair, skin, and nails in the state of Illinois. Today's webinar is going to be on basic hair color overview. Um, we're going to just talk about, it's very basic, we're not going to get into formulating or anything like that, it's just the very beginning stages of learning about hair color and the different types of hair colors that are available. Um, if you have any questions, please utilize the chat box. Emily is on with me and she's going to help navigate and keep an eye on those questions. Um, if you have not done so already, please make sure that you've typed in your full name, your full school name, and your school location into the chat box. This is so that we can track attendance and send that over to your schools along with your certificates for the webinar. And so without further ado, I think I've covered everything. Also, if you guys get kicked off um, for whatever reason and you jump back on, your chat box will be empty. Um, and that's just normal, but know that you don't have to type your information in again. It will be saved on my end. Um, again, it is so important that you are typing your information into the chat box. That is the only thing that saves when I log out, and that's how I track the attendance. I track it after the webinar is over. Um, so it's so important that you are typing that information into the chat box so that I can get your attendance and certificates over to your school. So without further ado, let's begin. So welcome to Hair Color Overview. Um, I'm gonna try my best not to make this brand specific so that it's just general knowledge. Um, but of course, I represent Aloxy Hair Color, so that's what we're going to be using um, when I turn my camera on. So welcome, everyone. So let's go back to the basics. So the the law of color is where hair color begins. So out of all of the colors in the universe, there are only three, yellow, red, and blue, that are called primary colors. And they are pure, and they create all other colors in our color wheel. So here's an example of a color wheel. A color wheel is so important to have in your dispensary, in your kit, um, in your mixing area, in your salon. You should always have a color wheel. So let's dive deep into this color wheel since it is the foundation of hair color. So primary colors, again, are yellow, red, and blue. Secondary colors are orange, green, and violet, and they are created by mixing equal parts of two primary colors. And then tertiary colors are yellow, orange, yellow, green, blue, green, blue, violet, red, orange, and red, violet. And these are created by mixing equal parts of a primary and a secondary color. Within all of these colors, we have warm and cool colors. So warm colors fall between the red, yellow, and orange, and cool colors fall between blue, green, and violet. Complementary colors are colors that are found opposite each other on the color wheel. And then when they're mixed together, they neutralize or cancel each other out. This is so important to understand when it comes to formulating, hair color, when it comes to doing corrective hair color, and when it comes to toning hair color and doing fillers. So complementary colors are key, so you do need to know them and understand them. So they are red and green, an easy way to remember that is Christmas, blue and orange, if you are from Illinois, you know the Chicago Bears, and yellow and violet, Minnesota Vikings, if you're from Minnesota. Or you could do fall and Easter or spring, those kind of colors fall in those categories. So when mixing complementary colors in different, per, um, I'm sorry, when mixing primary colors, I need to change my slide, in different proportions will create neutral colors such as grays and browns. When you're mixing complementary colors, they also neutralize one another. So they will cancel each other out. Some key terms that you need to keep in mind is the term tone, which means the name of a color, level, is the degree of lightness or darkness of a color, so how light or how dark it is, which is what, if you are familiar with color, what our level system is. Intensity, this is the brightness or vividness of a color or the strength of the tone. Texture is the degree of coarseness or fineness of a hair fiber, so whether it's fine, medium, or coarse. 
Porosity is the amount of moisture a hair is able to absorb. And density is the number of hairs per square inch on the scalp. So these terms are very important, um, especially texture, porosity, and density. All these three play a huge role in your product application. It plays a huge role in processing time, as well as your parting when you're taking sections. So for example, texture, the degree of fineness or coarseness of the hair. Fine hair um, is, has more color molecule density than coarse hair. So it will process a lot quicker than coarse hair. And then porosity, again, is the ability of hair to absorb moisture. So with hair color, the more porous the hair, the more it will absorb, but it will also not hold on to hair color. It fades very quickly. And then density, number of hairs per square inch. So somebody who has fine hair, you can take larger sections when applying color, as opposed to somebody with really thick density, you'll have to take finer sections so that you are getting an even color application. So hair color falls into two categories, non-oxidative and oxidative hair color. And within those two categories, there are five types of color, temporary, semi-permanent, demi-permanent, permanent, and lighteners. So non-oxidative hair colors, these wash out of the hair during shampooing and they create a physical change to the hair um, with a temporary effect. So they wash right out. Oxidative hair colors, these use the aid of a developer to create a chemical change in the hair with a long lasting effect. So let's first talk about non-oxidative hair colors. So the first one we're gonna talk about is temporary hair color. So temporary hair color has no chemicals used. It will not lighten the hair. They last typically from shampoo to shampoo. And this depends again on the physical properties of the hair as well as their home maintenance. So if you don't wash your hair every day, um, you're gonna get more longevity out of it. They will neutralize unwanted tones in the hair. They have very large color molecules, so they're only going to coat the surface of the cuticle, creating just a physical change. So when you're applying a temporary hair color, those color molecules are very large, so they're only going to sit on the surface of the hair. They're not going to penetrate, which is why they only last shampoo to shampoo. Now, if the hair is really porous, which means the cuticle layer of your hair is open, you may get a little longer than a shampoo to shampoo and it may stain the hair because those color molecules, when the hair is porous, the cuticle layer is so blown open that those large molecules will get stuck in those cuticle, raised cuticles. So it may last a little longer than just a shampoo to shampoo, um, but again, this all depends on the physical property of the hair. <clears throat> Semi-permanent hair color. There, again, there's no chemicals used, so there's no chemical action on the hair. It's going to deposit and cannot lighten the hair. So you're gonna to deposit only. It fades with each shampoo. So it's gonna gradually wash out. It can be used to neutralize unwanted tones, add tone, or deepen the existing hair color. And it's also great for refreshing hair color that has faded. So semi-permanent has large molecules as well, but it also has some smaller molecules. So those large molecules are gonna sit on the surface of the hair, but those tinier molecules, those are going to nestle their way into the cuticle and sit right on the outside of the cortex of the hair. Now, if you're not familiar with the layers of the hair, your hair has three layers, a cuticle, a cortex, and a medulla. The medulla is the very center core of a hair strand and not everyone has one. Um, and there's no, at least pertaining to hair color, it doesn't affect us in any way. So we don't even care about the medulla. The cortex, this is where your color melanin is found, eumelanin and pheomelanin. This is what makes up your natural hair color. And then your cuticle layer, which are the shingle-like layers on the outside of the hair strand. So when the cuticle, that outer layer is exposed to heat, 
um, water, it will expand and raise. So hair color molecules can then shimmy their way in there and semi-permanent is just gonna sit right at the base of the cuticle layer, right on top of the cortex. So since it's penetrated a little deeper into the cuticle, as opposed to just sitting on top, you do get that longer lasting effect than a temporary hair color. But again, semi-permanent color does not last very long. So temporary hair colors, examples of those would be your color hairsprays, mascaras, mousses, even hair chalk would be considered a temporary hair color. Um, warning with these, they may not wash out on overly porous hair. So again, if the hair is really porous, it's probably not gonna wash out from shampoo to shampoo. It may take a few shampoos. Semi-permanent hair color. Examples of semi-permanent are Aloxy Ultra Hots, Manic Panic, Jazzines, Pervana. These are all types of semi-permanent hair colors. These are great to use as fillers, toners, fun shades, and to be applied on top of pre-lightened hair to create those intense fun shades. So both temporary and semi-permanent hair color are applied directly from the tube or bottle, and no developer is needed. So this is just gonna be applied directly from its container. And then always follow manufacturer's instructions. Not every semi-permanent hair color is the same. So make sure that you are following your instructions. So some semi-permanent hair colors say that you need to wash the hair and it needs to be applied to towel dry hair and then applied under heat. Some do not. For example, the Aloxy Ultra Hots, we prep our hair with our color prime as opposed to shampooing. So we put color prime, then we apply our Ultra Hots and then you have the choice to either process at room temperature or under heat. That's up to you, depending on how intense you want the color. And again, processing times vary from manufacturer to manufacturer. So again, follow manufacturer's instructions for optimum results. Moving on to oxidative hair color. So under oxidative hair color, we have demi-permanent. So demi-permanent is also known as a long-lasting semi-permanent or oxidative hair color without ammonia. It contains little to no ammonia. It's designed to deposit color, add tone to hair. It does not lighten any existing hair color, so you're not gonna get any lifting with a demi-permanent. It generally lasts four to six weeks, depending again on the physical properties of the hair and your home care regimen. And it uses a low volume developer. Um, some manufacturers call them catalysts, some manufacturers call them activators, um, but they're just low volume developers. There are three types. They come in liquid, cream, or gel. And the action on the hair with demi-permanent is you have, again, large and small molecules. Um, they're not as large as your temporary or semi. So because they're not as large, they're going to penetrate the cuticle and they're going to penetrate just the outer surface of the cortex. So they're gonna just kind of nestle their way into the cortex. They're not gonna go deep into the cortex. So they're just kind of sitting right on the outside edge. So this is where you're gonna get that longer lasting um, longevity out of it. You're gonna get the four to six weeks it's going to take longer to wash that out of the hair. Permanent hair color. This is known as an aniline derivative tint. It's mixed with a hydrogen peroxide or developer. It is capable of lightening natural pigment and depositing artificial pigment in a single process. It does contain ammonia and hydrogen peroxide to allow for lifting and lightening. And it comes in three types, liquid, creams, and gels. So permanent hair color has tiny color molecules. They will penetrate through the cuticle into the cortex and deposit deep into the cortex, making it a permanent change. So demi-permanent hair color. Some examples, we have Aloxy Tones, Redken Shades EQ, well, a color touch, matrix attitude, the list goes on. These are great, demi-permanent colors are great for toners, 
fillers and for gray blending. So demi-permanent, again, there's no ammonia, there's no lifting, so you're not gonna get gray coverage, but you will definitely get gray blending. Demi-permanents will not leave a line of demarcation, and what that means is you're not gonna see any outgrowth. So as the hair grows out and you're washing your hair, the color fades and you don't get that line. So you're not gonna have an obvious color touch up. Again, it uses a low volume developer, Permanent hair color, we have Aloxychroma, Redken Color Fusion, Wella Colostan Perfect, and Matrix Logics. Permanent hair colors utilize developers. You're gonna have to use 10, 20, 30, and 40 volume. Each of these developers are going to determine what you're trying to achieve. So 10 volume is typically used for deposit only or very little lift, 20 volume, is for up to two levels of lift. It's typically what we use for gray coverage. 30 volume is gonna give you three levels of lift. 40 volume will give you up to four levels of lift when you're using it with hair color. That law of lifting does not apply when you're using it with lightener. Um, developer strengths with lighteners are just how fast that lightener will lift. So 40 volume is gonna lift a lot quicker than 10 volume. When you're using it with lighteners. Permanent hair color. It cannot lift artificial hair color from the hair. So if hair has already been color treated, permanent hair color is not going to lift that artificial color out. It's only going to lift natural melanin out. So keep that in mind. If somebody has already colored their hair dark brown and they now want to be light brown or blonde, you cannot just use hair color. You, you'll have to switch and transition to light hair. Permanent hair color is great for gray coverage. It's great for highlighting virgin hair or low lighting. So warning, both demi-permanent and permanent hair color require a skin patch test 24 to 48 hours prior to a service. Um, this is for somebody who has never received color before. It's to test to see if they are allergic to the hair color. Um, so you would mix up your formula. So you would do your consultation and you want to mix up the actual formula that you are going to be applying to them. Mix that up and either apply it to the back of the ear or the inside of their elbow. Um, I like to do behind the ear. You wait 24 to 48 hours and if they are having any type of reaction, that is a positive result, so you cannot proceed with the hair color because they are allergic. If there is no reaction, that's a negative result, so therefore, you're good to go. Lighteners. So lighteners are also known as bleaches. They are used to decolorize, remove, or diffuse pigment. There are two types of lighteners. There are on the scalp, which contain oils and creams, or also, and they are also known as oil or cream lighteners. And then you have off the scalp lighteners, and these are your powdered lighteners. Lighteners will have the hair go through approximately 10 stages or degrees of decolorization. And then hair should never be pre-lightened to a white. If you get it to a white stage, um, you're gonna be causing some damage and they're gonna have a lot of breakage. If hair is overly lightened and you go to tone it or recolor it, your toner may make the hair appear very ashy or gray or very cool. Porous hair rejects all warmth but accepts all cool colors. And remember, all colors are made up of the three primary colors, red, yellow, and blue. So if your toner, when you're applying it to the hair, it's going to reject any of the yellow and the red, but it's going to accept all of that blue, which is what's going to make it ashy and gray or greenish looking. So your stages of decolorization. These are not all the stages, um, but this is what I could find. So <clears throat> when you apply lightener to dark brown hair and you let that lightener sit, it will start to lighten in these stages. So darker hair, you're going to start exposing their undertone. So we take lightener, let's just say, 20 volume, put it over brown hair, and you literally sit there and watch it lighten, it's gonna go through each of these stages. It's gonna go from brown, then it's gonna start to look like a red brown, 
and it's going to kind of be like a red, a red orange, and then the lighter it gets, the more brassy it will be, then it's going to go to orange, yellow, pale yellow, palest yellow. So these are your stages of lightening or bleaching, or these are your contributing or underlining pigments, um, which play a huge role when you are formulating when you are toning, which is why the color wheel is so important to understand because this is how we tone hair, how we do color correction, and how we formulate. So understanding the color wheel is key. So with that being said, we are going to create a color wheel. Now, if you've already been through color through school, um, I know some exercises are either using uh, tempera paint to create your color wheel, um, I know when I was in beauty school, we did uh, using Play-Doh, kids Play-Doh, we did the primary colors and you had to mix your Play-Doh together to create the colored wheel. Um, however, I feel that it is way more fun to actually use hair color to create the color wheel. So that's what we're going to do today. So just remember, it is not the box or the bottle that does the work. It is the hands and the mind using the color that is key. And that is quoted by Rick Wellman. So we are gonna use Aloxy today. So for more information on Aloxy products, you can contact your account executive. For future webinars, you would contact myself. Um, I do have some helping hands today. Both of my daughters are done with their online schooling, so they wanted to help to create the color wheel today. So they're actually going to color the hair that we are going to be coloring today. So I'm going to turn my camera on. Emily, let me know when you can see my workstation pop up on the screen. and Let me know when it's actually a full screen. I should see some Aloxy tubes or boxes. And then where are my helping hands? Do I have helping hands? There you guys are. Come sit. You guys are going to do the hair coloring. I'm just going to talk you through it. Okay, so we are going to use the Aloxy Ultra Hots. So these are our semi-permanent hair colors. On pre-lightened hair, these are going to create some pretty intense shades. Now we do have them in all different colors, teal, pink, blue. I mean, we have all different colors. However, we're gonna make our own using just the three primary colors. Now remember, when you are using hair color as opposed to paint or Play-Doh, um, the mixing ratio can be a little different because again, this is a chemical, this is not pure paint. Um, so keep that in mind, but we can create all of the colors of the color wheel using Aloxy Ultra Hots. All right, so we're going to use yellow, which is called Lemon Cello Yellow. So all of our colors have a color personality. So our yellow is called Lemon Cello. Our red is called Rosalini Red, and our blue is Midnight in Milan. So I've already opened them. So we are going to be coloring tiny swatches of hair. Um, I've cut these down, so these are what they look like, and I just cut them in half so that I'm not wasting such a large swatch for just hair color. So we are going to do, let's see, let's move our brushes out of the way. Let's pick a brush, give one to your sister. So what you don't see on camera is I have a palette that we're going to be mixing the color in. I have these little swatches of white yak hair. So this is not human hair. These are yak. And then I do have a bowl of water so that we can rinse our brush in between. And then a towel so they can wipe their brushes clean. Um, if I was doing this in my classroom, I would tape these down on a piece of foil. The problem with the foil on camera is that it reflects way too much light 
and it gets really, so I'm using parchment paper. It's not ideal, but for camera, it works. All right, so we're gonna do our, I'm just gonna, since we don't have to mix anything, I'm just going to put a blob of blue on that piece of hair, a blob of red on that piece of hair. Where's my yellow? And yellow. All right, girls, pick a color and blend it in. So you want to make sure that you are saturating the hair. Tilt your brush slightly so that you can fan out the hair so it gets in between. There you go. So it's yak hair. It's not human hair. It is not going to absorb color like human hair does. However, yak hair is great to represent gray hair. So if you do have a mannequin head that has, um, if you guys have those color mannequin heads, those quadrant heads, the salt and pepper section, those are a blend of human hair and yak hair. Yak hair is great to represent the resistance of gray. Who's doing yellow? All right, so now we have to create our secondary cuts. So you girls were not in here when I was going through. So how do you guys know how a secondary color is created? No. You can talk. You don't want to talk? <laughs> Seriously? All right. So secondary colors are created by mixing a two primaries. So I put a blob of blue in there. We're going to put a blob of red. And I'm really eyeballing this. If you really wanted to, you can get a scale and you can measure this out if you want it to be more accurate. Now, blue is pretty intense. Um, I'm not going to do equal parts of blue and yellow to create green because, I mean, it's, the blue in Aloxy is pretty deep. So I'm gonna add a little more yellow than I am blue just so that it's a true green. yellow and red to make orange. Same with the red. The red in Aloxy is pretty intense, so I'm not going to do as much red as I am yellow. I'll do more yellow. And I think that will be more of a true red. And that's where color formulating and just knowing your color line comes in. Okay, start mixing girls. Pick a color. Ooh, that's a really pretty green. Yeah, you can use the other end of your brush to mix. Take a swatch and apply. And then while they're doing my job for me, are there any questions? So Schools, those of you who are logged in, what do you guys do for creating your color wheel? Do you guys do hair color, paint, Play-Doh? Do Play-Doh. Play-Doh? Yeah. <laughs> You'll have to try it with color. If you guys have the primary colors in your... You can even do this with your... Um, so in Aloxy, we have, it's called gems. They are our concentrates to intensify any of your color formulas. They are part of the permanent hair color and the demi line. You can try using your gems to do that as well, um, but you would have to use developer, which is why I choose using semi-permanent because I don't have to sit there and mix with developers. Uh, but you could try it with your gems or your intensifiers. Uh. <laughs> Cookies, you guys use like frosting? Oh, that's amazing. 
do you actually bring cookies in and then frost them and eat them? Because that's ideal. I should have done that when I was back in teaching the classroom. All right, girls, are we ready to create our tertiary colors? All right, so now we need to create our tertiary colors. So those are created by mixing a primary and a secondary, but we need to use these twice. So we can't just mix into these because I need a blue green and I also need a yellow green. So let's add some, all right. So we need a red violet. So I'm gonna do red. And then what I want you to do is take a little bit of the violet, add it to the red to make red violet, and then whatever's left in this container, we will add blue and make that blue violet. Does that make sense? Okay. All right, get to mixing, girls. We'll just do them one at a time. Ooh, that's a really good red violet. I am all about this frosting and cookie idea. So my oldest will be going to beauty school in the fall through the high school program. You should let your teachers know that that's what you guys should do. Use the cookie idea and then bring cookies home to your mother. All right, so now we're gonna do the same thing for our green. So we need a yellow green and a blue green. So we are going to do a dab of blue, and then we'll add green to the blue, and then we'll add more yellow to our existing green to make our yellow green. Who's doing what? Pick a color. Now you're gonna wanna put a little more green. And I added more yellow than I should, only because you added blue to my green. So with the Loxy Ultra Hats, if this was on a person, um, again, you would have the hair primed with your color prime. So our color prime is going to give the hair a light cleanse. It also protects the scalp so that um, if they do have some sensitivities, they won't be as itchy, which I don't typically find with semi-permanent hair color. And so you'll just mist the hair down with color prime. It also equals out the porosity in the hair so that your color will take evenly. And then you would apply your ultra hots in any array of colors that you choose. And then I like to process with heat. I feel that it intensifies the color a little bit, really deposits, gives a little longer effect, but you don't have to, room temperature, and it can process anywhere from 10 minutes up to 40 minutes. I typically do under heat for 10 to 15 minutes, and I find that that works well. Um, uh, what happened to my screen? Do you guys still see my screen? No. I can see like your normal screen on your phone, but not. Uh... That's, that's, that's the weird part, because that's not mine. <laughs> I'm not using a phone. I don't know who's that oh, is. So... I see your, I see the colors. All right. Okay, I need to figure out whose screen is taking over my screen. So somebody's screen is taking over mine. Can you guys all make sure that your videos are turned off? Um, somebody's video is on. Yeah, 
Hey, Emily, can you figure out whose camera is on and why they're doing a share? I mean, well, so it's it says Sophia's screen in the bottom corner. Mine says it's um, Marie's screen. Mine shows Sophia's screen. Sophia. All right, hang on. Let's. I'm not seeing anything on my page. It says that everyone's screen is turned off. All right, what do you guys see now? Because I turned off the thank you page. It's, it's like the slideshow now. All right, stop sharing. It's your colors now. It's back to my colors. Okay. All right, perfect. So what do we got left? We have to do, we did our yellow green, we did our blue green. Now we have to do our red orange and our yellow orange. So we're going to add some red. You're gonna take, one of you is going to take some of the orange and mix it with that red. And then the remainder of the orange, I will add yellow to it. You have a gloved hand, just scoop it with your finger. You're fine. When when you mix the colors um, and you get to like your tertiary colors, do you want to like add the lighter color to the darker color or does it matter? Um, I like to add the lighter to the darker because I have more control. If you start with your darker color, again, blue, especially when you're using hair color, Blue is such a concentrated color that you end up over mixing when you're trying to lighten it and then you end up starting over. Okay. So, yeah, I always, especially if I'm using hair color as opposed to paint or food dye. Like I know um, one of my, back when I used to teach in the classroom, one of the exercises, like if it was this time of the year and we were in color theory, um, I used to have the students bring in eggs and we would color Easter eggs, but we would only use the primary colors and they had to create the color wheel since there are 12 colors in the color wheel. And then we would do Easter eggs. And we would actually hollow out our Easter eggs. So I would take a pin, poke a hole on each side, blow out the yolks, and then we would string them and hang them in the classroom. <laughs> that sounds actually pretty fun. I tried to make it as fun as I could when I was teaching because the color wheel is my favorite thing to make. Like there's nothing more fun than creating all of these colors and using hair color. I really do enjoy doing it with hair color. All right, so for ultra hots, you are gonna allow this to process for about 20 minutes. And then here, you've got gloves on, go wash that, thank you. So these are gonna process and then I would just, with cool water, I would rinse these completely out, dry them and then I would mount them to a sheet. And then you have your completed color wheel using our ultra hugs. So any other questions regarding color, whether it's epoxy or just color in general? Is there a specific reason why you choose this brand over other brands or which brand do you prefer the most and why? Um, well, I, rep I work for Aloxy, so this is why I choose Aloxy. Um, prior to Aloxy, my next favorite was Wella. Uh, Colostan Perfect, um, those are my favorites, is Aloxy and Wella. After that, um, I'm not going to tell you the brands I don't like because that would just be rude. <laughs> um, but then I would probably go with, um, I do like Logix. If you are familiar with Matrix, Logix, it's probably not my favorite color line for 
longevity and great coverage, but it is a pure color line. So when learning color, um, because it really is pure uh, pigment, you're really understanding the law of color. So it's a great color line to learn off of. Um, I do, I am a fan of Wella. I don't use Redken very often, um, but I have in the past. Um, I use L'Oreal Professional. Again, I will I will take a Loxy and Wella over all of the other brands that are out there. I've never used Goldwell, um, so I can't really give you any opinion on that. Um, but I do love the Ultra Hots. If I had to pick any semi-permanent hair color to do these fun shades, Ultra Hots is the only one that I would truly, truly pick. And it is purely because these fade on tone. You're not going to get off color results. Um, I've used Pravana in the past. And when Pravana fades out, as much as I love Pravana and the longevity of Pravana is amazing, the fading that occurs with it, I'm not a fan of the off color results. And I don't like the fact that Pravana is very difficult to get out of the hair when you want to remove it. Aloxy removes beautifully out of the hair, like completely. With 30 volume lightener, shampoo cap bowl for about 30, I mean, you have to have, you know, have patience for it to get it out, but it does remove completely with no traces of color. So if you're somebody who likes to do these fun colors and change them often, Aloxy is the route to go because you are going to, this fades out beautifully. It removes from the hair beautifully. Um, whereas when I used Pravana in the past, I couldn't do those fun colors as often because they don't wash. They can't, they don't remove very easily. Um, so yeah, that's why I choose Aloxy. And Aloxy in our permanent hair color line, we have a um, express permanent hair color called Andiamo, which is my all time favorite. I get 100% gray coverage in 15 minutes less than 15, anywhere from 10 to 15 minutes. Um, so I'm a fan of working faster and making more money. So for those reasons, I choose Aloxy. Any other questions? Uh, I was just wondering, have you ever tried Joico? Uh, I've used their styling products, but not their hair color. I've, uh, I've used their hair color and it's actually one of the lines I've used for over a decade now because especially when you want like reds um, or anything that has that's on like the warmer side. I haven't tried the cooler colors, but they they actually work really good and they stay like I they stay until I put the intense color eraser in it. Oh, nice. Yeah, I don't um, now that I you know, I can get this delivered directly to my home. I don't typically go to the beauty supply stores anymore because everything just gets delivered to me. Um, so I'll have to wander my way out and see what else is out there. But no, I've not used Joico. But I do like their styling products. They yeah, they, I, they do I got nice their, styling uh, products. I got their foam color wash. It's a cleansing conditioner. And that you only use a little bit and it works really good and it doesn't strip the color out. Yeah, we have, Aloxy has Insta Boost, which is a conditioning color mask and those are amazing for refreshing color at home for your clients, which I don't have any currently at my fingertips. Um, which, which salon store uh, sells Aloxy? None. Aloxy is exclusive. You cannot get Aloxy anywhere unless you are a Aloxy account. We are, that's the one thing that we take pride in with your new school is that all of our products are exclusive. So you cannot get Aloxy anywhere unless you are an Aloxy account. So if you guys are interested in trying out the Aloxy, we do have a student order form. We are allowing students during the um, quarantine or stay at home order. If you wanted to try out any of our hair color, we have a student order form that we can send over to your schools. So just have your schools request the order form from us and we will send it over and we can have it shipped to your home. Awesome. Thank you. My pleasure. So just make sure you notify if you are, if you're an educator, 
um, or if you're a student, just contact your educator and have them contact us and we will get the order form sent over. Any do you have to do, sorry, do you have to do any type of certification for it? Or for like using that line, like how Olaplex, they have like certifications for their line or? No, you just have to be licensed, licensed okay. professional. If you are a licensed professional, you can register at Aloxi at their website. Otherwise, um, if you're a student, you would order it through us or through your school. So if you've not done so already, please make sure that you've typed in your full name, your full school name into the chat box so that we can track your attendance and get your certificates over to your school. Again, if you're interested in purchasing any of the Aloxy products, just make sure that you have one of your educators or school administrators reach out and request the student order form. Um, that will be, we will be doing that till the end of the month. Um, I'm not sure if we've extended student ordering into June, but as of right now, it goes until the end of May to get products sent over to you guys. Otherwise, we normally do not sell directly to students. It's strictly for schools. Ask what would happen if you added develop, um, developer to these temporary Hang on, you broke up on me, Emily. What was the question? Somebody asked what would happen if you added um, developer to the temporary and semi-permanent quarters? Well, first I would have to ask, why do you want to add a developer to it? These are, so these are not direct dyes. They're, or they're not aniline derivatives, so they don't need developer. They're designed to be, the color molecules are designed to be applied directly from the container. So like temporary hair color is like hair mascaras, hair sprays, um, like those things that you find during Halloween. Semi-permanent hair colors, those are those, these fun, intense colors. Um, you're not going to get longevity out of it if that's what you're trying to achieve. If you're trying to achieve longevity out of these intense, bright colors, um, if I was doing this on a person who really wants that longevity, I would pre-lighten their hair to a pale yellow, apply my intense color shades of choices that I would want to apply, let that process, rinse them out, and then I would do a clear gloss over so that it seals that and puts an extra layer onto the hair so that when they do start washing the hair, it's got to go through that clear layer first before it gets to the pigments. And then I definitely would not wash my hair as often if I had these intense colors to prevent fading. But I would not, again, follow manufacturer's instructions. Don't try to change the chemical makeup of a product. Um, it's definitely not going to be in your favor. If anything, you're just going to dilute it. Marie, do you take the pale yellow color that you brought your hair to? Do you take that in consideration when formulating your color mix? Yes. So ideally with the fun shades, you want to get to a pale yellow so that you're getting a true result. Now if, so me for example, I'm naturally a brunette, I'm a natural level four, my undertone is red, I don't even get to a pale yellow, being that I have naturally curly hair, my hair will break off before it gets to a pale yellow. So I don't even try. Um, but so, but being, with that being said, since my hair cannot, or I do not allow my hair to get to a pale yellow. If I wanted like these intense pinks and purples, I'm not gonna get that because my hair is only gonna get to like probably an orange, yellow orange, 
kind of a color. So these cooler colors are not going to be as intense because again, if my hair is only getting to like this, let's see, we're going to use my color wheel as an example. So I pre light my hair. I can probably get a little lighter than this. Maybe. Let's really be honest. I'm probably not going to get that light. Um, I'll get in between here. So if I wanted this blue in my hair, there's no way lifting my hair and only washing me out at this orangey stage am I going to get blue. I throw this blue over my orangey hair, I'm going to get brown. Because again, they're opposite the color wheel, they neutralize one another. So if you really want your client to have this intense blues or intense greens, you have to get them to a pale yellow. Anything under that, anytime you have that orangeyness to it, when you're lifting and you're only getting like in between these yellows and these oranges, you're not going to get these cool greens and blues. They're going to neutralize. So you're not going to get the true blues and greens. Now, if I wanted to color my hair with these pinks and these oranges and these reds, and I wanted them to be deep, then I would stop and wash my hair out at this orangey level because this is only going to help intensify and add depth to my warmer colors. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. So that's, again, this is why the color wheel is so important because you're either going to neutralize or you're going to intensify. Any other questions? Now these are great for fillers as well because the porosity or the color molecule is large. Still, I would probably use tones for a filler, but if you had the ultra hots, they have larger color molecules. So for a filler, if I was naturally a level four, like I am, and I have, let's say I have I don't know, level nine highlights, and I wanna get rid of them, I wanna go back to just one color, I would use my ultra hots in like this orangey, orange, red, orange, because my undertone at a level four is red, orange. Let's go back really quickly. I'm gonna go back to my slides. Give me a moment. Let me know when you guys see the slides. They're there. Yep. Okay, and can you guys see my mouse? Rolling around yeah. on the screen. Okay, so people with darker hair, their undertone or their contributing pigment falls in this brown, red, brown, red, and even red, orange. This is typically like your level five. So clients that have dark hair underneath is this grassy, orangey, dark red undertone. So when you're doing a filler, if I've got highlights that are yellow and I want to go back to brown, I need to put this back in the hair first. So I would mix up some of my ultra hots, you know, some red and yellow, mix them together, get myself a nice coppery kind of color. I would apply that all over my hair so that my yellow highlights um, are now this red brown and then I would mix up my after letting this process washing it out I would then mix up my formula for my neutral so let's just keep it simple we're just going to do 4n and I will take 4n I would probably if my hair is really porous I would use a demi as opposed to permanent and I would color my hair with my 4n and my 7 volume Aloxy tones, let that process, wash that out. That way my hair does not turn ashy or mucky looking because again, porous hair rejects all warmth and accepts all cool colors. So I need to put that warmth back in. It's almost like painting your walls in your house. You had to prime the walls first if you're trying to cover up a dark color. You put a primer and then your fresh coat of paint. It's the same concept. We have to prime the hair first, which we call a filler. So we fill it we put back the undertones that are missing at that level that we want to achieve, and then we will color our hair. Um, 
same thing with like if you're doing low lights. So if somebody's not necessarily wanting a full color, but they've got really, let's say they've been platinum and now they want to gradually kind of darken in, put some low lights in. If you were to just take a, I don't know, 6N and low light somebody's hair that's really porous, their hair is not going to be very pretty when it washes out. That It's not going to be neutral because the porous hair is going to reject all the warmth that that neutral is made up of and it's only going to grab onto the cool colors, which are your blues and your greens. So when you're doing a low light, even though they want to be neutral, you're going to want to mix your 6N or whatever. We're going to keep it simple. 6N, but I may add a drop or two of either a 6RO or maybe even using the colored gems. I may do a drop of gold with a drop of copper. Mix that in. And I'm talking a drop. You're literally just going to put a drop. And just that drop into that neutral is going to prevent the hair from grabbing too ashy so that you're going to get a natural low light, if that makes sense. And this is for somebody who wants a natural low light, not necessarily somebody who wants a copper low light. If they want copper, that's even better because you don't have to worry about it. So anytime you're going back or filling the hair, you're always filling with a warm color. You're wanting to put back this undertone back into the hair before you color over it. Does that make sense? That's probably, this is more advanced color. It's not really basic. That's more advanced. <laughs> That's color formulating or color correction, I should say. But again, have your color wheel handy because the color wheel is going to help you determine where your direction is going. I lost my chat box. I don't know where it went. There it is. I got to open up that chat box again. why the chat box won't open on my screen. I see the chat box, but it won't. It's blank. Emily, please tell me you still have the chat box. Yeah, I have it. I have it all copied, too. I just went yes. through one, one by one. Um, the only other question we've gotten is, where do the instructors submit a request form to? So I'm not, I'm not sure what you mean by that, though. Oh, the order form. Um, it's info at yournewschool.com. Mm -hmm. Or actually, what school are you with? Just type in your school name and just write the word order form next to it, and I'll make sure an order form gets sent to your school. And if I didn't mention this already, um, the Ultra Hots smell amazing. They smell so good. They're very fruity. So if you are interested in order forms, just type in your school name and then just type the word order form after it. So I know that you want an order form. Otherwise, if you are a school um, and you need more information, you can type or send an email requesting information at info at your new school.com. And then I also wanted to point out, um, you will get incredible shine with the Aloxy. I just, I'm gonna show you, let me see. Is my camera still on? I don't even know if it's on. I don't know if you can see the camera, um, but there is a bunch of, um, sparkle, glitter, <laughs> in this hair color that provides so much shine. It is amazing. I bet you if we rinse this all out, this water is brown. But this is all, um, all the intense shine that's in the water. It's very glittery. 
all right. Well, that is all I have for you guys today. If questions do come up, feel free to shoot me an email. I'll be more than happy to answer any of your questions or ask your educators to reach out. Um, this afternoon, if you're going to be logging into the afternoon webinar, that will be on the Prohesion Acrylic System. So thank you guys so much for spending some of your morning with me. I hope you enjoyed the webinar. Have a great day. Bye-bye.